Hello everyone, welcome to episode 9 of Victory Garden for Maine, brought to you by the University of Maine Cooperative Extension. My name is Lynn, and today I'll be joined by Marjorie, Lonnie, and Ellen. In this video, we will be discussing pain-free gardening. Marjorie, you have our first question. Thanks, Lynn. I've been gardening for more years than I care to admit, but when I think about certain garden chores, I know I'm going to pay for it for days afterwards. I don't expect totally pain-free gardening at my age, but I would love it if it hurt a little less. Lonnie, do you and Ellen have any advice from your experience with Maine agribility? Thanks, Marjorie. I work with farmers, fishermen, and forest workers who live and work every day with chronic health conditions or disabilities. From this work, I know that modifying tasks or adapting tools can make a big difference in how you feel at the end of the day and at the end of the season. These same techniques can work for home gardeners as well, and we'll talk about specifics in this video. I'm passionate about gardening, but lately I've found that gardening chores are getting harder and taking me longer. Is it just me? Each person is unique with their own strengths and limitations, and a little planning before you begin your work can go a long way. It really helps if you break down the work you have to do into specific bite-sized tasks. Then you can approach them in order of effort and your abilities. Be sure to write this plan down so that you can see your progress throughout the day. When you're ready, gather all the tools you'll think you'll need for the day. And if it's a lot of items, be sure to use a wagon or a bucket to carry them all. So I plan my work in the garden and break down what I need to get done based on my time, my energy, and my priorities. That sounds like good advice. What else do I need to know or think about before I get started? Before you go outside to start your day, consider your work conditions. Be prepared with a hat, plenty of water to drink, and sunscreen. And don't forget bug spray for flying insects and also for ticks. Sometimes when I've been working on a hot day, I don't feel so great, dizzy and lightheaded. I suppose that's not good, is it? Some people are affected by heat more than others. For example, children don't sweat as much as adults and they can overheat quickly. Older adults may have more difficulty regulating their body temperature and medications may affect the body's heat tolerance. If you can, do your gardening early or late when it's cooler and the sun is less intense. Some of the ingredients for success in working outside is water, shade, and rest. Drink water every 15 minutes, even if you're not thirsty. Rest in the shade to cool down and wear light colored clothing and a cap. Off the shelf cooling hats and scarves can also help with this. I am ready to head to the shed to get my tools. Anything else I should know? No matter what your age or condition, make sure the tools you use are right for the project and they fit your size and strength. Tools will really make the job go easier, especially if they're designed with ergonomics in mind. Can you explain what an ergonomic tool is? An ergonomic tool is one that assists with the work and at the same time reduces the impact on the body. This reduces strain on the muscles and decreases the chances of developing repetitive motion injuries and arthritis. Ergonomic tools are designed for different body strengths and sizes. They're often made with lighter weight materials and they will have a thicker handle for a more comfortable grip. If you take your thumb and your forefinger and create a circle like this, that's the perfect size of a grip for you. Gripping a tool that's smaller than that will be putting undue stress on the cartilage of your fingers. Those ergonomic tools sound really nice, but I already have a lot of tools. Is there anything else I can do? You can use the tools you already have, but in different ways or with small modifications. For example, you can use a long-handled tool from the seated position and not just when standing. 
You can add a D-ring or a T-grip to a long-handled tool. This will help to reduce stress on your hands and wrists and back. You can also modify tools that you already have with duct tape and insulation. You just cut a small piece of insulation, wrap it around the handle, and secure it with duct tape. This gives the handle a thicker and more comfortable grip. I do this to all my five gallon buckets that I use in my garden. The handle that they come with is pretty tiny and it can get pretty heavy and uncomfortable when that bucket is full. I realized a while ago that as I got new tools, I would make sure that they felt good before I bought them. I even have two different carts for the garden. Depending on what I'm gonna do and where in the garden I'm going to be. I have a nice wide-based wheelbarrow for my off-road gardening adventures. And then when I'm working along the driveway or near the street along the sidewalk, I have a fold-up cart that's much lighter and smaller. If you can't use a wagon, be sure that you don't carry too much at once. And then be sure that the load is balanced. For example, carry two buckets that are half full in each hand rather than one full bucket with one hand. Before you lift anything, be sure you know where you're going and the path is clear. You'll go down on your haunches or onto your knees into a catcher's pose. Bring the item as close to your body as you can. Kind of wiggle it up onto your knees with one hand on the top of the item and one hand down below. Then you bring it just as close to your chest, hug it into your chest as closely as you can. Using your abdominals and your leg muscles with one smooth motion, stand up. If you find when you're down on your knees that you can't move that item easily up onto your knees, get help. That means could be another person or a dolly or if it's something like a bag of soil, you can make it into smaller portions. I like that gardening keeps me physically active. I usually just jump right in at the start of the day. Is that a good idea? Just like your garden soil needs preparation before you start in the spring, prepare your body before you ask it to work each day. Do some easy movements to warm up before you start the squatting and the bending in the garden. Stretching before you head outside to the garden can help you avoid aches and pains. Be sure to do some easier tasks before you launch into the more difficult ones of the day. See the resource list for a link to a great agribility on stretches for gardeners. And remember to keep stretching throughout the day. Drink plenty of water and be sure to stop, rest, and enjoy the surroundings and all your hard work. It's also important to change tasks frequently, for example, every half an hour. This means that you're changing your position and the muscles that you're using. Rotate tasks from standing to sitting to kneeling. This way you won't strain any one set of muscles. In general, if you're bending from a sitting position, it's easier on your back than when you're standing up. Just be sure to bend from the hip hinge and not the waist. It can be harder to change tasks frequently than you think. Most of us have been conditioned to finish a job once we've gotten started. Changing tasks all the time can make you feel scattered as though you're not getting anything done. The list you made this morning when you were planning your day is your guide. Tick off what you've done and acknowledge every task that's completed with a stretch and a deep relaxing breath. I'm curious on how to best switch from sitting to standing to kneeling when I'm out in the garden. There are some great tools for that. One is the garden bench. Turn it over and the seat becomes a kneeling pad and then you use the sturdy legs to help you get back up on your feet again. For example, with a tomato plant, you can go from picking lower leaves to improve circulation to standing up to clip on new growth to the trellis or cage. The garden scoot or rolling garden seat lets you work from a seated position virtually anywhere in your yard or garden. It's on wheels and has an adjustable swivel seat. You can scoot along your rows or pull it to your next location. 
Oftentimes it has a bucket carrier so you can use it to haul your garden supplies too. The garden rocker is a handy invention. It has a broad seat and the height is adjustable. And the bottom is curved so it allows for broad reach. It's great for harvesting a row of beans. It's lightweight and it's easy to pick up and move. Five gallon buckets can also be really helpful. You can sit on it as you harvest along a row of plants or use it to get back on your feet again after kneeling to weed between plants. That sounds like it'll help. But sometimes I get going on a row of something or another in the garden and before you know it, I feel like I'm stuck in that position. It's so important to be mindful of how you're feeling. Pain is a red flag. If you're feeling tension in your lower back, or your shoulders are aching, maybe you have a headache or you're feeling stressed, it's time for a stretch break. Maybe you've been bending over, flexing your spine, so now you can breathe in, lift your chest and your chin upward to extend your spine in the opposite direction. A few minutes to breathe, to stretch, and to notice the beauty of your surroundings gives you a chance to recharge. At that point, you can decide to go back to what you were doing, you can change your tasks, or even call it a day. I can see that this is a different way for me to approach the work in my garden. Yes, it is. And changing old habits can be hard. Be flexible with yourself. You can start the day by walking through the garden with a cup of soapy water to pick off bugs and assess what needs to be done. When you finish up, turn on the soaker hose. You can wait to do the weeding or hoeing until that area of the garden is shady. Later, you can harvest some veggies for supper and move the hose to where it will need to be tomorrow. Every session doesn't have to be a project. 10 minutes of weeding every day is over an hour a week of weed prevention and no waking back. I like the ideas of tool modifications, planning my tasks, and breaking big jobs into smaller chunks. But are there more ways that I can make gardening easier? Start by looking at your abilities and adjust your garden size and design to fit your needs. Raised bed gardens are a great option because they bring the gardening area up to you. They can be low to the ground at six to eight inches, or they can be raised up to about three feet so that you can stand while you're working in the garden. Often they'll be built to a height where the edge is great for sitting and resting. And I find there's a lot less weeding in raised beds because the weeds don't infiltrate like they do on the ground. It's a great solution if you have excessively sandy or on the other spectrum, heavy clay soils because you modify the soil right in the raised bed. You can also plant more intensively than you can in traditional rows and get exceptional yields. You might also consider growing vertically so you can garden from a standing position. Cucumbers, melons, pole beans, tomatoes are all crops that can be trellised so they can be harvested with minimal bending. Container gardens bring the garden to a more convenient height for you, up onto stairs or patio or balcony. Some containers have wheels, or you can put them in a cart to move them out of your way during the off season. If I'm working in a raised bed or some other tight space, are there tools that will make that easier? In addition to hand tools, telescoping tools can be used in raised beds. They can be adjusted for height, so you can use them standing or sitting. This is really helpful. If I put these strategies into play, I'm sure my muscles will thank me. Any last advice for when I'm done in the garden for the day? It is tempting to come from the garden and head right for the lawn chair, but a few minutes of post-garden care can really help. Hydrate after time in the garden, especially on hot, humid days. Do a quick tick check as you change out of your gardening clothes. If possible, take a shower, especially if you've been exposed to irritants like biting, stinging bugs, or even the small hairs of the brown tear moth. And if you're headed back outside, don't forget to reapply sunscreen and bug repellent. Thanks, Marjorie, Ellen, and Lonnie. And so to recap, keep these points in mind. 
Evaluate your tools. Are they the right fit? Organize your day and prioritize your activities. Stretch and change tasks frequently. Use good practices around lifting, bending, and harvesting. And always remember to check for ticks at the end of the day. More information is available on the Humane Extension website and in the video description below. Please be sure and check out the next video in this series, Preparing Your Garden for Winter.